David is a software engineer who makes about $118,000 in the Dallas, Texas area. He's looking to buy a home in the $500,000 range. And although everything sounds good so far, he has a $870 payment for a Tesla and his down payment is coming from his parents. Should he buy a house in this market? We'll see. So as we've done in previous videos, we're gonna use our handy dandy magic iPad to get a good ranking system for see what the situation is. So we're gonna start off before we get to the savings and budget, cause trust me, there's a lot to say there. Let's talk about the market first to see if it's even doable, if the market's healthy enough in the specific area. Now, I always tell you guys this, don't go look at videos that just talk about national market stats. Look at independent local data. I am not licensed in the specific city and in the future, if this series does grow, I might be able to make some connections with agents in different cities just so they can give me actual data. But for now, let's just use the same info that you would have access to if you're looking to buy. So I have pulled up the exact neighborhood that he's looking to buy and I guess it's called Richardson, which is like north of Dallas. Um, he wants to buy in a specific area because his parents want him nearby him. Listen, I'm not gonna fault your parents for loving you. How they love you is their choice, but I'm a little jealous. But anyways, the situation is, is as follows. He's looking for a three bedroom, two bath under $500,000. It has to be in a specific neighborhood of Arapaho, Arapaho. But for the sake of this video, I actually just pulled up the specific zip code that this neighborhood is in just to get a good idea of the market stats. Now, I'm not familiar with this area, so hopefully the whole zip code doesn't bring everything down. But either way, let's see what's going on. So there's currently 27 houses for sale. I have a base under 500,000, three bedroom, two bathroom plus, only single family properties. And if we compare that to see what's under contract and pending so we can see what's being sold, there's actually 48 results. Now, if I were working with an agent, I would ask him to give me the last solds for the last 30 days in this specific criteria. I'm not looking at everything. I just wanna see this specific criteria just to get a good idea of what the activity is. But usually the pendings are pretty solid. They're like basically houses that I've accepted an offer and they're under contract. So the fact that there's almost double houses going pending is a good sign. It's definitely showing signs of more of a seller's market, right? There's more demand for houses and there are listings available. Now, traditionally to get the months of inventory number, we like to basically divide the active over the sales. So we get an idea of how many months it would take for the inventory to sell out if the same active rate was selling but we're going to use pending so that's all we have so if we divide 27 by uh, 48 there's actually a 0.56 absorption rate essentially so this is pretty solid when during the whole craziness of the market like two years ago at least in i can speak for phoenix that number was like 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.5 like it was nice under one basically is meaning that it's a hot market and now if it's like two or three like two or three months of inventory then it's like a lot slower market. Right now we're about two or three. Four, five, six is like, okay, it's, there's houses are not selling. Things are definitely a lot slower. So from what I'm seeing so far, it is showing like it's a somewhat healthy market. But of course, like I always say, you have to talk with an agent who has a actual local data. Like we want someone who has access to the MLS. Now it's just some idiot looking at Zillow. I don't have to be, why do I have to be so aggressive with myself? Now we're gonna look at other websites. So it looks like uh, realtor.com is telling us that the median list price is about 465. Uh, so that's telling us you always wanna buy like below or at the median value. Anything above median value usually just sells for more. Uh, it's harder to sell, I should say. Um, so let's look at what Redfin, usually Redfin has a better indicator of the median sales price. Yes, yeah, it's 475, which has, it's gone up. A uh, median sales price, once again, is you get all the numbers and it's the middle number. Um, you want to buy usually at or below. So 475 is telling me that. I'm already thinking like, why? Why are you pushing this to 500, man? I get it, 500 houses are nice, don't get me wrong, but you know, just, if I go from price low to high, instead of looking at the ninth, newest, nicest ones, I can see actually there's like 12 that are in the 300,000 range, 13 that are in the 400,000 range, and then the rest are in the 500,000 range. Oh, actually one is. So I don't know, I feel like, first off, I'm just gonna tell you now, you probably don't have to spend 500. I would probably be more comfortable with you spending um, especially if it's not your money, uh, under the, the median value. So 450, 400-ish, if you even can get to the 300s, even better. But either way, that's just to kind of get idea. Um, you probably already had this in mind, but it looks like the market itself is okay in this specific area, the specific zip code. It's not only maintaining, but it seems to be slightly increasing. According to a Zillow a home value analysis, it's gone 3.2% over the last year. Of course, just like everywhere else, the peak was like May of 2022, 
but slight dip and it's starting to kind of go up a bit. So focus only on single families, still the same trend there. So somewhat healthy market, yes, I'll give you that. And it looks like the price range that you're looking for is doable. So gonna have to start you off strong probably putting you like at a seven for the market market looks healthy it looks like it's doable not only do you can you buy a house in the price range that you're looking in there's plenty of inventory below when when, when i see that i actually want to bump you up to like a nine uh when i see that that this is it's a great market it, it really shows a lot of health and it also can challenge you to actually say hey maybe i can buy something below where i want and i'll tell you what a lot of people are stuck in a position where they can't do that so that's a huge blessing to have that opportunity so now before we get to the budget and let's talk before we talk about that tesla payment let's talk about the saving situation i imagine you've seen my show before you know that i was going to come at you here a little bit okay like i said earlier first and foremost good for you for having parents who want to support you awesome here's my concern if you just can hear me out you sent me an email so there's a level of trust here i promise you i won't betray that trust now the people in the comment section i don't know about them but me and you here okay let's forget about everyone else david you told me in the email that you've been trying to save money but you just can't make it work somehow okay you didn't send me a budget i challenge you david build a budget out if you don't know how to send me your statement last 30 days statement two maybe two months if you have it block out your account number block out your personal data block out the only fan subscriptions whatever you want do it, want people to see send it to me and i will make a video of how to make it added to a budget you're making a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars a year yeah david um there's no excuse there's no excuse here man i have some numbers you gave me yes so but i don't have the entire picture i get it you've been able to save ten thousand dollars over the last two years here's the thing you have your parents who have this the ability to help that's amazing but you are in a great position where you don't need them to i'd rather them put it in a retirement account that they can use so they can live their life comfortably or maybe they put it away for your future kids or something right like that money can be used a lot more wiser ways and this happens all the time like we're not going to pass judgment here parents always are buying big down payments for their or, or buying houses for their family members it, it is what it is i'm concerned more about the habits you've developed and how they're going to continue once you're into this house well let's first kind of go how it will look like so uh let's say you go with a four hundred and fifty thousand dollar house from here you're getting helped with 20 percent. so 20 percent would be what like ninety thousand dollars i don't know what closing costs would be in your state but let's just kind of shoot for i don't know ten thousand dollars that is $100,000 you're being gifted by a family member for you to buy a house. Here's the thing. You don't have an emergency fund. You, t you told me you have $10,000. Okay. So I guess you've started your emergency fund. Let me show you something real quick. Okay. So if you buy a house for four fifty, dollars interest rate, uh, maybe it won't be that high with 20% down. So do seven and a half. So 20% down a 7.5% interest rate. Property taxes, I know, are expensive in, in, there in Texas. I for sure don't think it's going to be that cheap. I'm thinking 500. Um, homeowner's insurance, call it 70. No PMI, yay. Uh, does this place have an HOA? Let me just pull up at a random place. No HOA, okay. So odds are you probably won't have an HOA. Okay, so $3,000 is going to be your mortgage payment. You're paying for rent right now. We'll go into it right now. $2,000. If you weren't able to save at least 3 or 5% for the last two years, or not only that, build a healthy emergency fund and you know start your retirement and, and, and then save your housing fund, what makes you think like you're going to be this brand new person when you move into this place and you're going to suddenly be able to do it with a monthly payment that's a thousand dollars higher and a lot more responsibilities because if something breaks down bro my toilet today in my office just flooded out of nowhere it wasn't all that those tacos i don't want to hear any comments about the tacos it just woke up and it was just completely flooded that's 200 dollars i had to pay just like that i don't know anything about plumbing i'm not going to get these these beautiful hands dirty right so you got it that's kind of the stuff that pops up if you were renting you just call a landlord hey come fix this so i'm telling you this not to shame you because you have amazing parents that are helping you if you develop the habits that are going to actually be productive and help you and then you take the help from your parents that's your prerogative my friend but right now i'm just gonna have to tell you the saving situation looks tough for me we'll talk about the budget right now but with the three thousand dollar mortgage Let's say let's add another 2k of expenses so like 5k dude you need to have 15k in, in some kind of emergency fund you need to have your retirement started somehow go talk to your financial advisor get that started if your job doesn't provide one or whatever gets that get that started and then even if you're not going to save a down payment can you at least save some cushion 
for the house can you at least say i mean do me a favor at least say five or ten k just for like expenses or something that way you don't have to call your parents if something breaks down you know what i'm saying i don't feel like that's too much to ask right but either way i'm gonna put your saving situation like a two you're not there yet david you're not there yet you're still young you're still learning and maybe 10 years ago when everybody and their mother was buying houses and making tons of money uh just for owning a house like you could get away with this like kind of loosey-goosey budget attitude but now more than ever you have to be defensive buying man defensive buying is in it is in and you need to be on the defensive it doesn't matter where you're getting your money from even if you win the lottery dude you have to be a lot more defensive so now let's talk about your budget now i have a feeling you didn't send me all your numbers because you kind of knew this is where your weak spot was in the future i anybody who's watching this and they want to send me your numbers first of all email me at contact at javier vidania i will not use your name or give me a fake name and i'll use it and if you send it to me, kudos to you, because we're going to use your example for, to learn together. Because right now we're all struggling. And if we can use examples like David's right now, it'll help everyone grow and learn, right? And not only him, but everyone else. But anyways, if anyone's going to send me anything, I challenge you, send me your budget. Send me a screenshot of what your expenses look like. If you don't have a budget, then use this opportunity to say, holy crap, I'm gonna email Javier. Let me write out my budget real quick. Go, you need a budget.com, the partners of the channel, links in the description, 30 day trial for free. Go sign up now, get that started. Or freaking do an Excel sheet, do something, like get started. And you can email me and say, Javier, this is my first month doing it, but here's my expenses. I appreciate that more than just sending me a few numbers, okay? So I challenge anyone to do it, at least do that like when you send me something. But anyways, here is what you send me. You're currently renting a place for $2,000, you have a $870 payment for your Tesla. You pay $400 in just utilities and you pay $500 in what you call survival. Now I'm imagining survival means like your phone, your food, your groceries. My friend, this is not a budget. This is, the, I was there. I think a lot of people watching this were there. This is like early 20s, like, eh, I gotta figure it out. I'm good. I'm making money. I'm good to go, okay? Let's talk about your income first, okay? So that's the, that's the budget you gave me. Your income right now, you said your gross monthly income is 118K. Um, you work, well, I don't think you want me to tell you where you tell people where you work, but you have a pretty good job. Um, still room to grow. Pretty awesome. The thing about it is when you get into a tech job, your family's proud of you. You're like doing great things. You're like, you know, you're getting the attention and love and you're on riding high, but really we let that get to our head and we start living really crazy and we go get a Tesla. I was there too. I get it. But, um, this means your gross income is about 98.33, but that's just your gross. So let's see if we can find the net. Uh, I, once again, anyone who's sending me this in the future, please send me your net income as well not just your gross um we're gonna just take 70 percent of that i know tax is a little different um there's no state taxes but i don't know i'm just gonna do 70 percent to be safe so that means you're bringing home about 68.83 as your net income give or take now we're not going to use the whole hey let's find out what you qualify for or anything like that because we're not lenders and a we're looking talking about budget not about what you can qualify for but if you want to know what you qualify for is like 45 percent of what that monthly gross income is minus your payments um you didn't include any credit card payments you didn't include any student debt so i'm assuming you're debt free other than your tesla so good for you or i don't know if the they're mysteriously in the survival number somehow anyways if you were some kind of genius and, and literally this is your budget and everything encapsulates everything, um, this means that you are spending 3770 and that means you can save up to 3100 a month. If this was truly a budget and you were like a master at it, that's about $37,000 a year you could have been saving. Could have been in a great position. Let's say some months you don't make it or not. Let's say it's 25 to 30K. You can be in a position, man, where you, you could have 50, 60K. I recently did a video about this one. I, I implore you guys to watch it. Where there's two teachers that are making 50K each in California and they've been able to live frugally and they saved $80,000. Now, they're a strong saving, strong budget, but their market was crappy. So they're going to wait. Um, you're in another situation. Anyways, this is just kind of a rough number. What you can safely afford is about 25 to 30% of your net income. So easily we just get 6,883. We multiply that, let's just say 30%. So that means you can safely afford a payment of about 2064.90. Afford, afford. Now we can go back to that calculator that we're using. And as you can see, it doesn't add up, right? Even at 450 with 20% down, it's still really high. Even with that 20% down with no PMI, it still doesn't work. You're probably gonna be like, have to take out 100,000, 2570, maybe 
get some kind of rate buy down yeah maybe it's, it's still tough it's a very tight situation and quite frankly it just doesn't work so let's give a ranking that budget's pretty bad too my friend I hate to say this but that tesla's not helping right 870 will probably make things a lot more flexible the great thing about this david is you're so close to having this be really good like if we get rid of this entirely and we get yourself like a cheaper car that's literally 400 dollars that you just save that you can increase this now to what is that? that would be 3500 that you're saving a month and let's say the great thing about this is that mortgage payment that you can actually afford is pretty comparable to what you're paying for rent now so we can literally the budget you build right now will be very similar to if you follow the rules and telling you and you go buy something with that monthly payment so what you can do is you can even get yourself like two roommates or something right and let's say you charge them i don't know 700 each that's 1400 of extra income you're adding in and now that bonus income coming in and you can even increase this further now you're you're saving almost five thousand dollars that you're building an extra income and you're so close you have the ability to you're capable of it i don't know if anyone's ever told you this yes you're making decent money yes your family is a great cushion but i am being stern with you because i have high expectations and i have high standards but more importantly i have those high standards because i know you can do it you're so close to just shifting some habits to get yourself in an excellent position this might take a six months it might take a year but those habits are going to help you for the rest of your life man the market's okay there the, but whatever happens with the market get yourself in good shape first start building better habits um some books i recommend you read grit i feel like there's a grit missing grit by angela duckworth the richest man in babylon very old school but very simple book i'm reading one right now literally pick it up right now if you want it we'll read it together uh i'll let you know like in the live stream if you pop in or something it's called the comfort crisis by michael easter there's three books for you let's let's all use this time in this crappy housing market to strengthen each other Let's use this time to when, when we're ready to buy, we're gonna be one of those really solid buyers that are not gonna take no for an answer. Let's be one of those buyers that have the emotional and financial strength to, to find the best deal that's gonna fit our needs. And, and we're gonna know what we want. The realtor and the lender are gonna fall to what we want and the seller will fall to what we want. When that time is right, it'll come. Instead of forcing things and buying things when people are telling us to, we're gonna know within ourselves when it's the right time to buy. So good luck to you, David. I wish you the best out there in Dallas. But anyone else out there, if you're brave enough to send me your situation, please email me at contact Danya. Thank you to our partners at youneedabudget.com. And of course, if you need a realtor, homemoney.com slash Javier. All the links are in the description below. Please use the links, they help the channel. So if you wanna help me out, go sign up for a free trial. Um, for you need a budget or something it definitely helps the channel out uh, YouTube thinks you should watch this video next so do me a favor click the likes and the subscriptions and whatever in the bottom and then go click this video next to so go check it out thank you guys appreciate you have a good one